thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Uh, you come with a prop, okay? Because the prop has a lot to do with what we're talking about. Now, we know the unfortunate thing is that people do break up. Divorces do happen. I think sometimes we think about if they have kids involved, who gets the kids? But we never consider who gets the dog. Why should, and, and you say at the beginning of any relationship, that's the first question that they should ask if they have a dog in common. Ideally, it would be helpful if there was some sort of understanding what would happen if their relationship ended and they have a pet together. Yes, that would be ideal. Okay, so what do the courts in North Carolina say about a matter when this presented before them? Um, well, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, um, uh, Pets are considered property, but every state is different, so you need to make sure that you understand what your state is, so check with South Carolina if you're a South Carolina viewer. But in North Carolina, we look at it um, as if it's property, and uh, so then you have to figure out what kind of property. So if a pet is marital property, it would be a pet that was purchased bef um, um, after the date of marriage, but before the date of separation. Mm -hmm. So that's how the court would have to look at it. So if there was a disagreement, if your relationship ends and there's a disagreement as to who would get the pet, the court's likely to ask you questions like, um, uh, when was the pet purchased? How was the pet purchased? What money was used? Was it a gift? And then we do also talk about the quality of life of the pet. Um, oh, uh, who the pet was registered to? Who mm -hmm. was responsible for the pet? There are lots of things that come into play when we're talking about it. Um, the other part is, um, there's actually, an, uh, if there was domestic violence in the home, there is a section of our statute that um, identifies that the court has the authority to, um, uh, to order that the pet go with one parent or the other or with a minor child if there was a, if there was a child involved. Okay, so, so pets in this instance are treated like children. They can be, they, they're not the same standard, um, but they can be. And in fact, um, we have visitation agreements for pets um, that we can incorporate into separation agreements. Um, pets can be part of a court order. Um, I have, you know, I've had some cases where parents like to exchange the pet along with the children, and then I have other cases where, especially during that initial <coughs> transition after a separation, where some parents like the pets to stay with them and the children to go with the other parent so that there wasn't that um, alone time. And the unfortunate thing is that a pet cannot decide <laughs> who they want to go, who they can go well, with. Neither can children, neither well, can children, Well, that is true. Right? There are cases where they do, the unfortunate thing, put children right. on, the, on the stand to make that hard decision. But with pets, they have no voice in the matter. What That's right. I mean, the court would have to look. We could look at vet, veterinarian records. We could look at the health of the pet, um, who was responsible for caring for the pet. Now, and that's after we decide whether the pet was marital property. So, I mean, it is, you're right. The pet doesn't have a say, but there are lots of factors that, that come into it if we're trying to make an arrangement for the pet. All right. How can folks get in contact with you? SodomaLaw.com, or you can call us at 704-442-0000. All right. And really yep. quick, and who's, who's your prop name? Who's the little dog's name? 